Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me for today's video. Today I'm going to be reviewing this product. This is the Freematic Highlighter in the shade Solstice from Doucet Cosmetics. In this video, I'm going to share with you a little bit about what I learned about the brand Doucet. I'm going to talk a little bit about this product in particular. I'm then going to show you me putting this on my face as I don't have any glow or shine on yet today. I'm also going to do swatches of this against other highlighters in my collection so you can see the tone and brightness of it. And then finally, I'm going to finish up with giving you my review and thoughts. So let me tell you something. Yeah, closer. Just a little bit closer. You know that description bar down below? I'm going to put links in there to every part of this video so you can skip forward to whatever part is of interest to you. Okay? Now that I've made you get up all close and personal with me, I apologize if I sound a little congested. I'm just a touch under the weather today. But we're going to move on because I am excited to tell you about this brand which I have not reviewed on my channel before. Uh, and it's always fun to learn about a brand that I, we, I've never heard of before. Uh, and let's talk a little bit more about Doucet. So let me start. That is how you pronounce it, Doucet. Uh, whenever I see people talk about this brand, they don't know if it's Douce, Douche, it's Doucet. Uh, it's not actually a word that means anything, but they kind of made it sound like a similar French word. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about their brand philosophy. It is discover your individuality. They talk about being inspired by Paris while being born and the brand is actually based in New York. They talk about having a New York attitude paired with a Parisian elegance. Their vision is to be an international brand for the international beauty. And they talk about how beauty isn't just one look, that beauty is defined by uh, different international places, that is defined by location. I wasn't 100% sure of what they were saying there, but the gist of it seems to be that there isn't one look that is beautiful. There are different beauty standards around the world, and their products are made so that you can have whatever look of beauty that you consider to be beautiful. So let's keep this international part in mind because I am going to come back to that later. I don't know if I agree with this, but they talk about how other brands will either focus on the color of the cosmetics or on the packaging and how they focus on both. They have beautiful colors in beautiful packaging and that makes them unique. Don't know if I completely agree. I think there are some other great brands that have great cosmetics in great packaging, but that is kind of where they're coming from in their philosophy. As far as the range of products they have, they do have enough to do a full face. They have complexion products, foundations, powders, they have everything you need for the eyes, everything for the lips, for the cheek, So, and they even have a couple of tools, so they do have a full range of products. And if you're wondering about what the price is, I would say they would probably be right in there to be sold at Sephora. Um, they're in around that pricing structure, it's definitely above drugstore, but it's not a like super luxe brand price. One of the things that they have that they consider unique is this Freematic system. Basically what it is is that they sell individual um, pans and they have their own magnetic palettes. Uh, the difference being that they make it in sort of a square shape where everything will fit nicely if you buy it from them. So there's Freematic blushes, there's Freematic uh, highlighters, and there's Freematic eyeshadows. Uh, and they do look beautiful. The eyeshadows at least have this pretty basket weave pattern on them and everything looks very sleek and put together. So as far as shade range goes, when you look at their eyeshadows, they have a huge range of eyeshadow colors. When you look at their lip products, there's nothing really wildly outside of the box. You're getting a lot of like the nudes and pinks and berry colors. There's not a lot of wacky shades in there. Uh, but when you look at the shade range for their complexion products, it is not great. I believe if I count it properly. They only have sort of seven to ten shades. They don't go super fair, but they definitely don't go super deep. And while that's questionable enough at any cosmetics company, remember talking back about what their vision was, that they want to be the uh, international choice for international beauty. They're really leaving out a lot of international people, a lot of different shade range ethnicities, backgrounds um, with the shade range they have. So I find it particularly a little annoying that they say they have a certain vision and they're not following through with that on who can actually use their products. For this Freematic highlighter, you can get six different shades of this. They do have a trio highlighter palette and then they also have these uh, Freematic ones where you choose the different ones that you want and they pop into a palette. 
Uh, this right here is a sample of Solstice, and this is 0.12 ounces or 3.4 grams. Um, if you buy a full size of this, it's going to be $14 American. I can't actually tell you how big the full size is. I wasn't really able to find that information, uh, as well as the ingredient information doesn't seem to be online. Now they do put the ingredients on the back of here. Uh, the first ingredient in here is talc. The second one is mica. Um, I do believe that this is not, and I'll just pop this out of its little container, this is not the full size um, because it's actually a different shape that the embossed D is in here when you look on the website at the actual product. Um, but whatever size the full size is, it is $14 American. The description for these highlighters is that there are six metallic shades to match different skin tones. Uh, Doucet's highlighters let you look... Uh, hmm. So they have some spelling and grammar mistakes on their website, which just makes you trip up a little bit when you're reading it. But let me tell you what I think they're trying to say. Doucet's highlighters let you shine, whether that be light or bronze. Super velvety smooth, the highlighter blends dreamily and just a little goes a very long way. Uh, wetting your brush before use helps create an even more metallic glow and contributes to a longer lasting look or wear the highlighter dry and be amazed as the finely milled formula applies with a smooth, wet looking shimmer. So that is all the claims about this. This is sort of a magnetic palette. So when I'm finished doing my review, I am going to pop it into a little palette that I have. It is, uh, you know, a nice tone. And as I said, I'll get into doing some swatches later. For now, I have no highlighter on my face. So let me zoom you in a little bit and we will apply some to my face. I have been using this uh, over the last couple of weeks uh, and usually what I like to do is use a fan brush for my highlighter so I'm just going to fan into here to get some highlight onto my brush and then pop it on the high points of my cheeks. I don't find this to be immediately super high shine like you can see how I'm really building that up to get that shine that I want there. And it does give a very wet looking shine which I'm not opposed to. Always like adding a little bit to my nose, to my Cupid's bow. And maybe just a little bit above my temples there, a little on my chin. Just give myself a nice healthy glow. Now that I have a nice glow and shine to me, I'm going to show you some swatches of this highlighter against others in my collection so you can see an idea of the tone and the shine of it. This highlight right here is the Doucet Freematic Highlighter in Solstice. This is the Becca Highlighter in Prosecco Pop. This is an Ofra Highlighter in Rodeo Drive. This is Essence Pure Nude Highlighter. And this is Jessica Liebskind Chocolate Diamond Highlight. So let me tell you my thoughts on this highlight. Um, because I have mixed thoughts. And I mean, that's often going to happen. Things aren't going to always hit it out of the park uh, or be super crappy. Sometimes they're somewhere in the middle. So I'll go through what I think about this highlighter is I don't find it to be very soft. Um, it's not sort of you stroke into it and get a huge amount on your finger. You really need to rub and rub at it to get something to come off. And for something that I like to use sort of a fluffy brush into to really sort of disperse uh, in a more airbrush kind of look, I don't love that this is a harder product because I feel like I have to keep going back in and going back in. The actual tone of it and the way it looks on the cheek I do think is really pretty. I wish I knew how much of the product you got for the $14. I do like the fact that they sell it in individual pans because if you already have a magnetic palette at home, it's less of an investment to buy that little piece and you're not paying for any of the packaging then you can just get the actual highlighter and maybe even a couple of them to try some different tones so I wish this was a little softer a little um, 
it picked up on my brush a little bit better and I don't find that it does a lot when I try to use it often I like to try to use these sorts of things on like my eyes um, it's not it doesn't have that kind of impact so I do find this is mostly a wet metallic kind of highlighter there does seem to be a little bit of micro shimmer in there um, I guess look at the tones see if it's the kind of thing that would be of interest to you because I I'm testing this right after testing that Becca highlighter and the Becca one was just so gorgeous and beautiful um, that I am going to return to that one more than I return to this one. I think there are some beautiful things about this company. I do think they have beautiful packaging. I think they have a real statement look to what they do. Um, I do wish that they paid a little bit more attention to their shade range. I wish that they paid a little bit more attention to what they were saying about their products online. There are some sort of mistakes and spelling things here and there. It's not a huge deal, um, but you just like the company to be paying attention. Now, I said at the start of this video that this was the first time I had heard of Doucet. That's not actually true. Way back over a year ago, when I first started getting BoxyCharm, but I wasn't doing these videos yet, I did get one of their Max Lash mascaras, and it was like crazy at making my lashes huge. So I think there are some real winners here in this brand. Uh, I just don't know. Mm. I think there are better highlighters, but I think if you're looking for a highlighter to try or something to pop into a magnetic palette, no reason not to try this one. It's not a huge high up there price if you just buy the little pan. I would love to hear what you think of this product and I'd love to get your thoughts on this review today. I feel like I didn't give you 100% yes or 100% no, but it's because it's not a great product, it's not a bad product, it's just kind of middle of the road. And highlighters are one of those things where I found a few that I really like, so it's sort of harder to live up to that standard. Um, if you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed to my channel, I will put my face up right here so you can do so. And I will put a link to one of my other videos right here. I'll put a link right here to the Becca highlighter review that I did so you can see one that I really, really loved. Uh, that is all for today. Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.